Hey everyone, welcome to how to do object pooling in Unity. In this episode, I will be showing you how to save performance in your game. The garbage collection in Unity is ancient and because of this, object pooling helps. It is a great way to optimize and lower the cost on the CPU when having to rapidly create and destroy game objects. There's a lot more ways to save on performance and I will be covering a lot of them in the upcoming episodes. So if you do want me to cover anything specific, let me know in the comments down below or hop on our Discord. Object pooling is a creational design pattern that pre-instantiates a pool of objects. Before the game starts, this removes the need to create new objects or destroy old ones while the game is running. Object pools are primarily used for performance and can significantly improve performance if a project is creating and destroying the same game object repeatedly in rapid succession. Once a set amount of objects has been instantiated in the pool, they are simply inactivated or activated as required, effectively just recycling the game objects and never destroying them. Object pooling is an important concept to understand due to the nature of some game objects and how often they will be created or destroyed during gameplay. When you are handling a multitude of instantiate and destroy calls of a single game object, it may be time to consider implementing an object pool. I will be showcasing a prototype I made with GameDev.tv. This is a 2D space shooter game. The projectiles are being instantiated on button press and travel up the screen and then gets destroyed after a certain amount of time or when they collide with an enemy object. This creates considerable drag on the CPU. Therefore, object pooling would be a great optimization in this situation as it will remove the need to constantly create and destroy objects during runtime. So to fix this, we are going to create a new script in the scripts folder and call it object pool. Then make sure you are inside of the game scene where these projectiles will appear. Create a new empty game object in the hierarchy, rename it to object pool manager and reset the transform. Attach the script to object pool manager. Open up the script and delete the start and update method. We will recreate the start method with the intelligence. At the top, we are going to declare some of the variables we are going to use. First, we declare a public static object pool called shared instance to make this a singleton. We will then create a list to hold the game objects we are going to instantiate. So we declare a public list game object and call it pooled objects. This will be usable for any game object. We need to reference the game object we want to pool. So we will declare a public game object, object to pool. And after we have reference to the game object we want to pool, we then need an amount to pool. So we will declare public int amount to pool. Now that we have our variable sorted, let's create a private void awake method. And inside the method, we will set shared instance to this to make sure the singleton has this script as its reference. We create the start method by typing in start and pressing enter. And in the start method, we will then write pooled objects equal new list game object, then game object called new object. We will then go through the amount to pool in a for loop by typing for int i equals zero and i is less than amount to pool, then increment i. Then inside the for loop, we will instantiate the new object by writing new object equal instantiate object to pool. We then do new object dot set active false and put it inside the list with pooled objects dot add new object. So to quickly explain again with what was done, this simple setup allows you to specify a game object to pool and a number to pre instantiate. The for loop will instantiate the object to pool with the specified number in amount to pool. Then the game objects are set to an inactive state before adding them to the pooled objects list. Inside Unity, select the object pool manager if not selected, which contains the script you just created. It'll have the object to pool and the amount to pool. You can set both respectively. Dragging projectile player prefab to object to pool will tell the script which object you wish the pool to use. This would have to be done for the enemy projectile as well, but it will require a few more parameters to do this. In this episode, I'm only showing how to pool the player's projectiles. You can adjust as needed. We will be doing a more in-depth tutorial at a later date. Set the amount to pool to a relatively large number such as 20. 
The reason for this is we want to make sure we have enough game objects to work with. If you need more game objects to appear on the screen, then make sure to increase this amount first. Now the script will always create 20 projectiles before the game even runs. This way there will always be a collection of pre-instantiated bullets to use. In order to take advantage of this we need to do a minimum of two more things. Reopen the object pool script so that we can create a new function to call from other scripts. After the start method we will write public game object get pooled object and inside this we will write for int i equals zero i less than amount to pool then increment i. Inside the for loop we will go through the pooled objects list taking any object that isn't active and returning it by writing if isn't pooled objects i dot active in hierarchy then return pooled objects i. After the for loop we can just return null. If there is an object which isn't active then we will get the game object and if all of them are active then it will return null. You should make sure to add a debug.log error here to state that you need more objects if this happens. We will then go into the script that instantiates the projectiles. In this case it will be in the shooter script. Inside this I enumerator, here you will want to replace any code that instantiates the projectiles, such as instantiate projectile prefab. Delete the instantiate after game object instance and type in object pool dot shared instance dot get pooled object. Now we would like to encapsulate this code in a check for whether we have received the game object back or not. We will do this by writing off the game object instance. If instance isn't null, then select from rigid body to destroy and cut and paste it inside the if statement. Also cut the audio player and paste this inside the if statement to have all this logic play out once we actually do have a game object. The time to next projectile can remain outside the if statement to make sure that we are still firing every few seconds. The code will request the game object to become active, but now we need to set more properties to that given game object. So inside the if statement we will write above the rigid body 2D instance.transform.position equal transform.position and then instance.transform.rotation equal transform.rotation and instance dot set active true. Now all of this removes the need to instantiate a new object and efficiently requests and acquires a game object that is only pre-instantiated, relieving the burden on the CPU of having to create and destroy all those objects. We also need to replace the destroy inside of this shooter script. In this scenario, we destroy the instance game object after the projectile lifetime amount. So to replicate this, we will create a new private I enumerator and call it deactivate projectile which takes a game object parameter called game object. Inside the I enumerator, we will write yield return new wait for seconds projectile lifetime. And then after the wait, we write game object dot set active false. Now that we have the I enumerator set up, we can remove the destroy call and replace it with the start curatine deactivate projectile and pass in the instance. To have this work for this project, we need to make sure that enemies are not using the same shooter script as they will not be able to receive projectiles from this pooled object list. We can specify this with an enum in a future episode just to show how to expand upon what we currently have. Select the enemy 0 and enemy 1 prefab and make sure that the shooter script has use AI disabled. Now when we run the game, we will have the objects pre-instantiated and set to an inactive state. You can see this in the hierarchy while the game is playing. With what we have right now, we have a finite pool of game objects pre-instantiated. When firing your projectile, you will notice only the needed projectiles will become active. And as soon as they reach their projectile lifetime, they will then become inactive. Do not try and shoot the enemies at this current moment, as the projectile will get destroyed when colliding with an enemy, instead of being set active to false. You can make sure to set the object as inactive upon collision with the enemies as well as your own mini challenge. For more info regarding object pooling, make sure to check out Unity Learn. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already joined the Discord channel, check out the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below as well as this full project to try out the challenge. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.